Welcome to our lecture online. One of the main mysteries in astronomy is how we can still have spherical structures in galaxies as well as in solar systems. For example, our own solar system has a spherical shaped Oort cloud that circumvents the sun, the planets, and the donut shaped copper belt. So how does that work? Why is it that there's still spherical shapes when most things tend to collapse into pancake shapes? After all, the ecliptic plane is a pancake-shaped sh region that defines the inner solar system. And also, galaxies tend to have the galactic disk, which is a thin pancake-shaped structure that it circumvents the central bulge. Why is there a spherical structure to the galaxy, which is more or less defined by the 150 or so global clusters that seem to be everywhere inside the, inside the bulge, inside the disk, and around the whole galaxy like that, forming that, that spherical structure, like bees around the beehive. Why is that? Well, we do know that these globular clusters, as well as a number of stars that are not contained within the bulge and the disk, there's indeed stars beyond it as well, not as dense, but that also are in the region outside, kind of forming a, a spherical region. Well, let's take a look at this beautiful galaxy, and we should recognize it as a sombrero galaxy. And notice also in the Sombrero Galaxy we have this very, very thick and dense dust lane with enormous amount of dust lanes, dark nebulas, lighted up nebulas, uh, emission nebulas, just all throughout the central region, the disk, the disk region of the galaxy. But then notice that the central bulge is quite large and actually goes up to a quite a distance and out quite far away from the center and the same on the bottom region. So we see, we can almost visually see this spherical region that encapsulates the entire galaxy. Well, the Milky Way galaxy is no different, except it's more pronounced with the global clusters or so, uh, about 150 or so, that completely forms this, this, this spherical structure. And why is that? Well, they end up being very old. Most of the global clusters in our galaxy are 10, 11, 12 billion years old, which means that they formed at the very beginning when the Milky Way galaxy formed as well. And somehow it didn't get caught up in this circular motion that, that pancaked the central structure and the disk of the galaxy. In other words, these global clusters appear to be moving all different directions, which is all not that different from the comets and the icy bodies that are contained in the Oort cloud around our solar system. We have comets coming in from all directions, from far away, from many, many billions of miles away from the Oort cloud region. They come in around the sun, go back out, but they come in from all directions, so they didn't get caught up in this rotational motion and the centripetal forces would then pancake down the, the structure into a pancake structure like it happened in our solar system and like it happened in our galaxy. So it's probably the motion of these global clusters, some of them contain over a million stars that are moving in different directions so they did not get caught up in that gravitational pull as things are moving around the circle where things would get pancaked in this direction but would get pushed out because of the triple forces into the direction of the circular motion. And it turns out that this then of course has this gravitational influence on various things inside the galaxy with things still moving through the disk and through the bulge of the galaxy in all different directions and that's what we mean by the spherical structure of our Milky Way galaxy. It's odd that it exists but there it is and then there's one more component to the galaxy we'll, we'll talk about on the next video where there's additional forces, additional gravitational forces caused by material apparently not seen at all and so we'll talk about that as well but notice we do have some interesting structures of the galaxy caused by the very initial formation of the galaxy where things were moving in all kinds of different directions, preventing it from pan pan pancaking down into a single flat galactic structure. Did you say the Oort cloud was a donut thing? No, the Oort cloud is a spherical region. It's the copper belt, which is the donut-shaped region around the... The copper belt is inside, so we have kind of like a donut-shaped region that goes around like this. It's pretty well in the, more or less in the same plane as the planets, with some exceptions. There's some that are not quite in the exact same plane, but close to the plane, but then the Oort cloud is a complete spherical region, just like we see in the structure of the galaxy. So it's in the same plane as all the planets? 
the copper belt is pretty well in the same plane, more or less. There's some, there's some that are angled at quite some angles, like uh, Pluto, for example, yeah. is angled at 17 degrees. But more or less, the uh, copper belt is, is in the ecliptic plane region of the, of the solar system. And the solar system goes out how far? Well, the solar system goes out all the way to the Oort cloud, and there's not a certainty about how far that actually is, but they think that might go out to almost an entire light year away from the sun. Mm -hmm, yeah, the Oort cloud is a massive structure that goes way out. We don't know how far out. No, I said how far does the solar or planet solar system? Oh, so the planet themselves, so the copper belt begins at about 40 astronomical units and ends at about 70 or 80 astronomical units. Where's the last planet? The last planet is 30 astronomical units. That's uh, Neptune. In the copper belt. <laughs> copper, yeah. So Pluto is in the copper belt. Neptune is inside the copper, is, is closer to the sun as the, than the copper belt. So could copper belt be what, like a planet that wasn't? Copper belt is a region where the remainder of debris of the beginning of the solar system is left. There's a whole bunch of debris that didn't accumulate in very large objects in the so copper belt. Is it a planet that could have been? You know, it's true. Some people still believe that Pluto is a planet, and other people believe that Pluto is not a planet. I mean, the entire copper belt. No, I don't think so. No, it's uh, not like the asteroid belt. The asteroid belt should have been a planet. The copper belt, probably not. Then where's the asteroid belt? The asteroid belt would be, of course, that would be kind of like between Mars, between Mars and Jupiter, yeah.